Good morning and welcome to our service. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday in Advent and today we light the candle of love, knowing that God gave us the gift of love in Jesus Christ. We say together, Lord God, you gave us the gift of love in Jesus Christ, born of Mary. Help us to be as faithful and obedient as she was and to show your love to the whole world. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. And in our song we will praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Amen. Lift up your voice and with us sing, oh praise him, alleluia, thou burning sun with golden meat, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Pure and clear 
We come to the point in our service where we confess our wrongdoings. God is the one who gives us the strength and grace to live as his obedient servants. Let us ask him to renew his strength in us as we come before him in humble confession. Let's take a moment to search our hearts for anything we need to bring before God this morning. Your love lasts forever. Lord, have mercy. You are our true word. Christ, have mercy. You are the rock who saves us. Lord, have mercy. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we sit for the reading which Miles will read for us. We can count on God's strength to help us in all things, to be obedient to him and to follow his ways. Let us give the glory to him, the only God. Our first reading is taken from Romans chapter 16 and verses 25 to 27. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory for ever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I hand you over to Leif, who's going to read the Gospel and speak to us. A reading from St Luke's Gospel. Because of Mary's yes to God, God is able to fulfill the promise that he made to David. Mary conceives God's own son, who will rule over God's people forever. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. 
You'll be with child and give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus. He'll be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The words of the Gospel story are so familiar from so many Christmas readings, aren't they? Do we ever really think about the reality of the situation that Mark is telling us about? A girl who's still a teenager, probably 15 or so, is confronted by an angel who says that God's chosen her to be the mother of his only begotten son. And that son will go on to occupy the throne of a royal ancestor who was a king a thousand years before. If the press and social media as we have them today had existed then, just think what they would have made of the story if it had got out. Any newspaper editor will tell you what sells the most copies. There are four categories. Sex, Royalty, religion, and mystery. And this story has the lot. Imagine the headlines. Pregnant teenager blames angelic visitation. Teenage mother-to-be claims royal connection. If the Nazareth Gazette and advertiser had been published that week, it might have said something like this. The village is abuzz with rumours of innuendo. According to the girl herself, the whole thing is a miracle. The angel appeared to me, said the girl, who as a junior cannot be named for legal reasons. And he told me I was going to have a baby. Naturally, I was confused. I mean, I don't know a lot about the process, but I know a man has to be involved somewhere. But the angel insisted that the baby would be the son of God. Fortunately, there was no such media, but there were plenty of rumours going about. And Mary's situation was potentially very dangerous. Unmarried, pregnant by, and not by the man she was going to be betrothed to. Living in a small community, bound by religious laws. She could have been stoned to death for it. Joseph, her prospective husband, would have been with his, within his rights to reject her. But following an angelic message of his own, he went ahead and married her anyway. And that's the other part of the nativity story that we read in Matthew's Gospel. But the facts of the story are quite sensational. A virginal conception. The coming of a child who will be the Son of God and the inheritor of an internal kingdom. And just as astonishing, Mary saying, in effect, God's in charge. Who am I to argue? Mark only gives us the gist of what happened. I'm quite sure that it would have been quite a lot more said between Mary and the angel than Mark records. I mean, even if you are an angel, you can't just roll up and tell a young unmarried girl she's going to have a baby and expect her to accept the fact with all its life-changing consequences without some serious discussion. But Mark's narrative is so low-key, just a simple summary of the encounter. Why didn't he make a bigger thing of it? of such a fantastic story? I think for two reasons. First, by the time Mark came to write his Gospel, the circumstances of Jesus' birth were well known and accepted in Christian circles, so he didn't need to elaborate any further. And then, when the angel declared, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end, Mary wasn't exactly surprised by that. 
She was troubled and disturbed and frightened, maybe, but she didn't question it. She only questioned the means by which it would come about. And that tells me that she must have been very familiar with the scriptures, and in particular, a passage that's being read in many churches today, the Sunday before Christmas. It's from the second book of Samuel in the Old Testament, and it's about King David. After a long time of insecurity, David is living in the security and safety of a proper house of his own. And he realizes that God is sitting outside in just a tent. And he thinks that what God needs is a proper house of his own, and he wants to build one for him. But God has other ideas. He tells David that he's followed the Israelites all through their wandering in the desert after leaving Egypt, with a tent as his own dwelling place never requiring a house to be built. He didn't need one then, and he doesn't need one now. Instead, it's he, God, who is going to make the house. From David will come a descendant who will establish a house and a kingdom that will last forever. What he's saying is that it's not our job to make a home for God. It's God's job to make this world a home for us a job that started with creation and will be completed by Jesus himself. So when Mary heard the angel's words, she realized that what God was saying to David, the angel was saying to her. The promised home would not be a building, but a person. He was God fulfilling that promise long before and choosing her as his agent because of her faith. And that's one of two things we should take away from this story. It's what Mary has been remembered and honoured for ever since. People, even Christian theologians, have questioned and doubted and argued about the Virgin Conception over the years. But actually, it's not that important. It's related in just a few words in two of the Gospels, and not mentioned anywhere else in the New Testament. What is remembered is the fact of Mary's incredible leap of faith and her simple submission to the will of God. I'm the Lord's servant, she said. May it be done to me according to your word. Because God fulfills his promises when we allow him to work through us. And the other thing to take is about David. He really did want to honour God by building him a house or temple. But was there something else? Was he trying to domesticate God? If God had his own place, David would know where he was and what he was up to. But of course, God can't be tamed or confined to one place. And recognising what God wants means resetting our own deep desires. So as we celebrate the birth of Jesus this week, let us remember that we're looking back a couple of thousand years. But now, he's no longer a baby in a manger. He grew up. He endured Good Friday for us. He's no longer safely wrapped up in swaddling clothes where he can't get up to mischief and ready to be put away again until next year. He's alive and at work. So let's look, not just back, but around and forward in the light of God's promise, ready to let him work through us in the building of our true home, his eternal kingdom. And with that, May I wish you all a joyful Christmas and a peaceful New Year. Amen. Let's stand and say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us strive to live in good relationships with each other and with God, especially as we celebrate his coming among us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also. Brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. And his banner over me. And he is mine. I am my beloved, and he is mine. I am my beloved, and he is mine. I am my beloved, and he is mine. And his banner over me. Your goodness, we receive your grace, we delight.
Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy Now Alison will come and lead us in our prayers. Hello. If you are watching on Facebook and would like a prayer for someone or a situation, please enter a name into the comments section. And so to our prayers. As Christmas gets closer and we are so busy with our preparations and shopping, cards, presents and endless to-do lists, it's easy for us to be distracted and forget those people or issues that need our prayers. Let's take a moment. Look around this morning or if you're at home, Think about someone you've not seen for a while. Who's missing from church? Who have we not seen for a while? Just think about them now. Just say a prayer for them. Maybe it's someone you'd like to see back in church. Maybe it's someone we've lost contact with over the years. Maybe for one of our new friends on Facebook. What can we do to help and encourage? Do we need to change anything? Father God, we ask for faith and encouragement to look someone up, to make contacts, to renew friendships, and to make the invitation. And this Christmas, more than ever, we want people to be safe and protected from COVID, but also to enjoy themselves and enjoy celebrating the birth of Jesus with those who are closest to them. Help us to not forget to reach out and make contacts with those who live alone and may not see anyone. A cheerful phone call, a video call or a social distanced doorstep visit can mean so much to someone who's on their own. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. And we must not forget in our prayers those we know who are ill, at home or in hospital, those who are having treatments or tests. Think of those who are anxious or depressed or are just struggling to cope with life. Father God, we pray for healing, for peace and understanding for all those who are suffering in any way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we think of those who have lost someone close, a family member, a friend, our own church members now grieving for the loss of a husband, a father, a brother. And we pray that family and friends that are left behind will know the love and comfort from them around them and feel the care that God can bring them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
and spare a thought in your prayers for those who don't have the basics of life, especially as winter approaches. A roof over their heads, enough clothing and food. Help each of us, Lord, to do, just not walk on by, but to reach out and show your care with actions and words. We really can make that difference to someone's life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for ourselves, our personal lives, situations and secrets only known to us, our own worries and fears, maybe long-held hurts, relationship breakdown, conflicts, bad feelings causing pain and a longing to be resolved. It's not easy, but we pray for strength to be able to say sorry, to forgive and to move on. Help us to talk, to have an understanding and to listen. Strengthen our faith and trust in you. Be with us as we make the first moves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father God, every person thought of today is known and loved by you much more than we could ever know. We entrust them to you in confidence and hope and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I have a prayer for the gift of a new vicar for our church. Heavenly Father, in this time of interregnum and as the pandemic continues, bringing uncertainty and fear, we bring our prayer to you. Our needs, our wants, a wish list for the future of this church. And we pray that as this task begins to find the right person for the job, you will be with us, guiding us by your Holy Spirit and helping us to see clearly the best way to go forward for the good of this church family and the wider community. As we start to consider our future, let us not forget our past. The years of work given by Paul, we thank you for his ministry and we pray that we can go forward taking the best of the past into our future and not forgetting the things we have learnt. We pray that as a PCC and church leadership team, we can work together under your guidance, putting our trust in you. We pray, our Father, that the person who will become our new vicar will be someone who knows Jesus as their friend and saviour and can show your love and care to all. We pray for someone who is gifted, a people person, is kind and fun to be with and have a passion for sharing the faith. We pray that our new vicar will be accepting and reach out to all, helping us to grow personally in our faith and collectively as people of Christ. We pray that they will have a care for children and young people and for the children and staff of our school at St Peter's and that they will have a care and a heart for the wider community of Burstall, working in unity with other churches in our town, with welcome, words and actions. Open our eyes and our hearts to the needs of the world and we pray that our new vicar will be supportive of the work of charities and agencies encouraging us to give time and gifts and support to campaigns for change. Father, we ask so much. We each have our own ideas, 
but we want the person that you know is right for us. These are the prayers of your people. We offer simple words to you in trust through our Lord Jesus Christ and pray that we will be patient and faithful as we wait for the answer. Amen. And merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our special prayer, the Collect for today. Eternal God, as we wait with Mary for the coming of your Son, bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, who chose Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord sustain your hope, deepen your faith, and increase your love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all, and those whom we love, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
says Don't be afraid for in three days You will rise again come to the end of our service it's been lovely to share it with you and so now we say let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ Amen Goodbye <laughs>